Hello! Thank you for joining Craig's Gun Channel this week. This week, we're going to cover the Ruger Model 2245. Ruger began manufacturing 22 long rifle pistols in 1949 using the World War II Japanese Nambu as the primary inspiration. The finished design featured a grip angle and overall appearance reminiscent of the German Luger. The design operated on a simple blowback principle and incorporated a bolt assembly inside a simple tube receiver as opposed to a traditional slide. There was no bolt hold open, it held nine rounds in the magazine, and the magazine utilized a heel release. Efficient and cost-effective manufacturing techniques allowed for the pistol to be produced and sold at a very good price point compared to the competition, and it soon developed a sizable market share, becoming the de facto standard that all other 22 pistols were measured against. In 1982, a redesign resulted in the Mark II series. Changes included an increase in magazine capacity to 10 rounds, a last shot bolt hold open, and scalloping at the rear of the receiver to ease grasping the charging handle of the weapon. The magazine release remained at the bottom of the grip. The 2245 version was introduced in 1992 and utilized a polymer frame as opposed to the metal frame of the traditional line. The grip angle was changed to emulate the 1911-45, and the magazine release was moved to behind the trigger guard, also to emulate the 1911. A bull barrel was standard, as was adjustable sights. The intent was to create a 22 pistol that, in layout and controls, resembled the 1911. As it was based on the existing MK or Mark II series, it is frequently called the 2245 Mark II, even though it was a new version. In 2004, the entire lineup was again updated and the Mark III labeling was applied to both the standard and the 2245 versions. Changes in the Mark III included a magazine disconnect, a loaded chamber indicator on the left side of the pistol, the magazine release was moved to behind the trigger guard across the entire line, and an internal safety lock was added, allowing the firearm to be locked with a key. Since its introduction in 1992, there have been thousands of the 2245 produced in a large variety of variants. Various barrel lengths and designs, threaded barrels, target models, lightweight models, and a variety of color options are all available. The example here is a stainless Mark II version 2245. This one was built in 2001. And the disassembly procedures for this version would apply to the Mark III as well. And while it's not difficult, there are a couple of tricks that you must follow. Let's take a closer look. As always, the first step is to ensure that the firearm is in fact unloaded and therefore safe to work on. On the Ruger 2245, the magazine release is right here. So we'll go ahead and push down on that. You can then release the magazine. As we can see, uh, it is in fact uh, empty. There's no ammunition in the magazine. The next step would be to ensure that the firearm itself has no ammunition in it. So you pull back on the uh, bolt and visually inspect the inside and there's no ammunition inside. So we're safe to start working on it. So let's go over the controls and features of the firearm first. Of course, we have the uh, trigger assembly. Uh, the trigger itself, it's a single action trigger. Uh, the only purpose pulling the trigger does is to release the hammer to fire the weapon. This is the uh, bolt uh, handle and these little serrations. And that's how you would pull the bolt back to charge the weapon. And that also serves to cock the hammer. This is the safety right here. Now, to put the, safe, the firearm on safe, you would simply lift up on that button. And as you can see, there is a little S that you can see. To get the, ready, the weapon ready to fire, you would push down on that button. And now there's a little F that you can see for fire. Now, uh, to, with this particular firearm, to put it on safe, the firearm does have to be cocked. So, here, let me show you. If you go ahead and fire the weapon, you cannot put that on safe. So, once the firearm is charged, you can then put it on safe. And at that point, it cannot be fired. This is the bolt release. Upon firing the last round, the bolt will lock open. And on the magazine, this little button-like thing here 
that's what engages on the inside this lever to lock the bolt open. And uh, this is also handy to help when you load. You can use it as a, a little button on the side. And when you pull down on that, it lowers the follower so you can load the magazine easier. So we'll go ahead and show how that works. When you put the magazine in, if you watch that as I pull the slide back, it lifts up and then that will lock the bolt back. Now, you can manually do that as well. When you pull the bolt back, you can push up on that and then let the bolt go and it will hold the bolt open. Of course, to release the bolt, simply pull down on that. Now, I will tell you that when the magazine is in the firearm, like this, and it's held back, the, you're pulling down on the spring pressure of that magazine, and it's a small button, uh, it, it takes a lot of force to, to push that down. So that, that's normal, that's just how this firearm is uh, set up. So let's go ahead and look at disassembly. So make sure the magazine's out. Now with this particular firearm, you need to make sure it is on fire. You need to release the spring pressure off of the hammer first. So basically you dry fire the weapon. Now this is a Mark II model. Now the reason why I mention that is the Mark II, you can do that without having a magazine inside the firearm. Starting with the Mark III model, there's what's called a magazine disconnect, and unless the magazine is in the firearm, the trigger will not work. So to be able to do this uh, with a Mark III, you would need to put the magazine in first, then you could pull the trigger and release the, the pressure uh, on that spring. Okay, the next step would be this little lever right here. It's the main spring housing latch. And there's a little indentation right here that you can use uh, to, to get something up under that. And basically, either with your fingernail or a tool of some type, you lift up on that lever. And what that does is it unlocks the main spring housing and it also kind of cams it out to lift it out. And so you can pull that out like that. Now this housing is where the mainspring is that for the firearm uh, that powers the hammer. It also is connected to a pin that goes through the frame, through the bolt, and through the receiver. And this is the top of that pin, that little button-like protuberance there. So that's what holds everything together. So once you pull this mainspring housing out, down and out of the way, you simply pull down on it, and that removes that assembly with that pin right there. And now we can pull the bolt out, set that aside. The frame and the barrel and receiver, the receiver and barrel is all one piece on these pistols. You, the frame you just pull back straight back. Uh, sometimes it helps to go ahead and kind of grab the barrel and with your thumb push on it. And then you can lift that off. There's a little tab right here that locks into this recess here and there's a little uh, shelf that's what holds this on on the front and then the pin holds it on the back so on the frame itself this is all the fire control assembly in there you would want to clean everything out good here use a, like a little brush like a toothbrush or something scrub everything out good there lubricate it with oil uh, not a whole lot, but you know, because uh, uh, these are or particular uh, receivers are basically they're plastic. Uh, but you want to lubricate all these parts in here. This piece right here is the hammer uh, that we talked about, and as you can see here, when you pull the trigger, that allows the hammer to come up, and then this little tab here is the hammer strut. And the reason I point that out is because this is what takes that spring pressure out from this housing here and transmits that pressure to the hammer. And that piece will come into play in a little bit. And uh, there's a little trick to putting these back together. And I'll, I'll show you that here in just a moment. So we have the barrel and the receiver here. This little section right here, that is... Uh, the ejector that will eject the empty rounds when you're firing. This little piece that sticks out here, 
you can see it when you turn it over this way and that is the feed ramp that will feed the ammunition from the magazine up into the chamber and then of course you have the chamber here this little notch here that's what the extractor goes into from the bolt uh, when it closes up all the way uh, this is a good place a lot of gunk and, and crud likes to get caught up in there and if it gets too much in there uh, the extractor can't go in all the way and it will keep the bolt from going all the way in battery and basically the gun will, will cease to operate. Sometimes people don't understand what's going on when that happens. The gun just suddenly quits working. Sometimes it'll shoot, sometimes it won't. Good bet that this just has a lot of gunk in there that needs to be cleaned out. Likewise, this whole section in here likes to accumulate gunk. So you want to clean all this stuff out really good uh, and you know brush it out, lightly uh, oil it and uh, then that's pretty much all you need to do with that as well. Uh, there's no further disassembly that needs to be done on any of this, and actually you, you shouldn't do any because all you would be doing is, is damaging it at that point. That leaves the bolt assembly itself. This is your recoil spring assembly, and if you notice that hole here, that's where the pin goes through that locks it all together. There's the extractor right there that goes into that notch that we were talking about. So first, to remove the recoil spring, you just lift up on it. it. It is in there with spring pressure, but it's just a little tiny bit of spring pressure. This little half moon shape, that goes into this matching piece on the uh, bolt. So you want to clean all this stuff off real good and lightly come uh, you know, give it a, a coating of oil. This right here is your firing pin. It, the hammer will come up into this sec space right here and will hit that firing pin which then transmits the, inf the energy to right there and then that's what would fire the round. Now sometimes this will get gunked up pretty good and then that will also cause some uh, operational issues. So to remove that, there's a pin that goes through the bolt and it goes th through and through, it goes through both sides. You can just push out on that and that will release this. There is a spring on the inside there And there's a little, like a leaf piece. And the spring kind of locks onto that, like that. This is a spring for the firing pin to basically keep it held back so that it won't fly forward uh, inadvertently when you're uh, uh, just, when you charge the, uh, the bolt. Uh, the bolt flies forward at a pretty good velocity, and if it didn't have that spring, in theory there's enough mass with this firing pin that when the bolt stops its forward motion, the firing pin could continue forward on its own and could make the, uh, the, the cartridge go off. Uh, it's not very likely, but uh, it, it is possible, so therefore they made this little spring in there. There's a little notch on the inside down in there kind of hard to see and that's what the front of that little uh, spring piece goes into so for reassembly you get the little angle and it should go down into that notch once that's in you put the firing pin back in and then you can push on that until you line up the hole and then you can put the pin back in, just like that. Now, normally I wouldn't tell people to go that far into removing parts. However, with a rimfire pistol, there's a lot of fouling and uh, debris and just gunk and residue uh, that are in those cartridges. It's, it's just the nature of a 22 long rifle ammunition. And it's not unusual for this to get gunked up to the point where this no longer will move freely and that will cause uh, weapon firing issues. On the extractor, this piece here, you just need to make sure you clean everything good. You can kind of push it out of the way a little bit and make sure you, you clean this entire bolt face area real good. 
uh, so that there's there's no gunk or residue in there. Then when you're finished cleaning that, you put the little half moon shaped piece back in its corresponding slot, push this back into place just so that it sits just like that, and the bolt reassembled. So let's go ahead and start reassembling uh, the firearm. Once you get everything cleaned up good, you would just match the frame to that little slot and then push forward. And it only moves maybe an eighth of an inch. And the back of the frame will be just barely past the end of the receiver there. Go ahead and put your bolt in. Now, in case you forget which way this goes in, you really don't need to worry. It can only go in one way. So if you try to put it in upside down, uh, it just it basically just, just won't go in. It, it'll go in that far and stop. So turn it over, put it in the right way. Oh, one thing I need to make sure I remember, make sure on the inside that the hammer is down. So you can hold the firearm level like this, pull the trigger, make sure that the hammer's down. Then that'll just slide right in. The next step, we have that pin. So you'd want to put that up in there. You can kind of look through and see where that goes. There's the hole that just goes right through right here. So you put the pin in. and push it all the way up until it sticks out through the top there. Now, at this point, with the firearm pointing down, you want to pull the trigger, and you'll, you'll just barely hear it, but that'd be the hammer falling forward. So you want the hammer uh, to basically be in the forward or fired position, because uh, we're kind of recreating in, in reverse the events we used to disassemble it. Then you need to put the mainspring housing down. And this is where most people will make their mistake with this firearm and lock things up and maybe damage it. And it's super easy to do. If you notice, this mainspring housing goes right in and flush like that. If it does that, that means you didn't put it together right. Now, what you have to do, and remember that, that little uh, strut that I pointed out just a moment ago. If you look inside in this area right here, and it's almost impossible to see for you, but that strut at this point, because we were holding it pistol down, that strut will be down in this area here. You actually at this point need to hold the firearm up and then you lift that lever up. Now, if you go to this point here and you start to feel spring tension, that's the where it's supposed to be for proper operation. So, so remember, the first step would be to hold the firearm down, pull the trigger to let the hammer go forward. Then you can put all the pieces in. Then you want to hold the firearm up. And that will basically then so you can kind of visualize what's going on. You want that strut to basically rest on this when you start to close it up, and it will follow this guide ramp until it goes into the saddle area for it right there, and that's where the main spring uh, engagement is. The spring goes straight down in there. There's a little cup for that strut to go into. So you want to basically hold the firearm up, lift up on that, until you start to feel spring resistance. When you do, then you can lower that latch and lock it back together. If you don't feel that spring resistance and that last little eighth of inch of travel, don't put it forward because it'll go forward and lock into place. However, what'll happen then is when you cock the firearm back and pull the bolt to charge it, it locks up everything on the inside and it can actually damage that strut or some other pieces in there. Uh, it's not uncommon to lock it up to the point where 
you can't take it apart again. Uh, and then you have to send it to uh, a gunsmith and uh, they'll basically work on it for a bit until they can get everything uh, freed up. If anything was damaged, replace any parts that were damaged and then you can get your firearm back. Uh, usually it doesn't damage anything, uh, however it, it can. So just, just be aware of that, you need to follow those steps. Well, at this point, you'd wanna go ahead, function test everything and it's back assembled. While not overly difficult, the takedown and reassembly steps and the consequences that could occur should you not follow them prompted some additional changes. In 2016, the line was again updated with the Mark IV with the redesigned trigger group, ambidextrous safeties, and the largest change being a simplified takedown lever resulting in a much easier disassembly process. As always, I hope this information has been of assistance to you, and until next week, stay safe.